Hello everybody, this is Lara from Pure Elliott Wave with your Monday to Friday free update for Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP. If you're not already subscribed here, I recommend you do so. I'm updating these three markets Monday to Friday and I'll add a weekend update if something big happens. I've been doing this for 15 years, over 10 of which now as a chartered market technician, so you're getting my experience and qualifications for free, so that's a pretty good deal. So hit the subscribe button, and if you are already subscribed here, I thank you very much indeed for your support. Ask me questions, guys. Any ideas within these three markets of what else you want me to cover? Do you want me to explain some of the techniques I'm using, how I'm using any of these indicators? Do you want me to give explanations on the Elliott Wave counts? Your questions help give me ideas for trying to make it a little bit more varied for these videos, otherwise it can get a bit repetitive. But I do want to be here nice and calm five days a week for you just to take a little bit of the emotion out of the market for you. For Bitcoin today, I'm going to adjust my resistance line for the pennant. This has a better fit now, but the pennant has now lasted 20 sessions or 20 days. The best performing flags and pennants, this is according to Kirkpatrick and Dahlquist, one of my favourite technical analysis books, uh, all complete within 15 sessions. So this one's now getting a bit old, and the probability of a good result after a breakout is now reducing but it is still a valid pennant. I'm calculating this as the target, uh, sorry, the potential breakout point and the flagpole from this high. I'm going to calculate it from this low and so that gives me a target about 53,190. But in order for that target to come into effect, we need to see a close above resistance on an upward session with push from volume. Along the way up, I will expect a little bit of resistance, some possibly about 48,000. It's possible price could just slice through and if it does, look out for a little back test of support before it moves up and away toward the target from the pennant. Yesterday's downward session, the lower wick found support at the lower edge of the pennant with a little bit of a push from volume, that may be it for downward movement for the short term and today we may see more upward movement. The last signal given from on balance volume was a bullish break above this horizontal resistance line so this is a reasonable technical signal because the line is horizontal and it's got three or four tests. On balance volume is coming back down, it may find support at that line, this may assist to halt a fall in price. That's another way we can use support and resistance lines from on balance volume. But if today completes a green session then we're going to have another lower pivot for on balance volume and I'll probably start to draw some new support lines if that happens. ADX is still declining, it's getting down to a fairly low level now, the DX lines are starting to whipsaw as price simply moves sideways. The change of the negative DX line above the positive indicates a potential trend change from up to down but a downward trend is not yet indicated because the black ADX line still has a negative slope. And reverting to that model of stochastics plus support and resistance when there's no clear trend that would expect a downward swing to support for price possibly at the lower edge of the trend, uh, trend line for the pennant and for stochastics to get closer to the 50 mark. My Elliott wave count for Ethereum today, I'm going to again tentatively label this second wave correction over as a brief shallow zigzag. This is possible in the context of the larger Elliott wave count, a third wave at multiple degrees at the weekly and monthly time frame. My Elliott wave count for Ethereum sees a third wave at primary, cycle and intermediate and minor degrees and now at minute degree as well so minute minor intermediate primary cycle five degrees that could be exerting a strong upward pull pulling minute two up and making it more brief and shallow than it may otherwise be at this point in the wave count we could be starting to see some real volatility return to the market price broke above resistance at this channel came for a back test of support and today it's moving up and away adding a little bit of support to the possibility that this channel is correct and meaning that this pullback may well be over now. For Ethereum I have a little flag pattern on, I've adjusted the lower trend line and now the upper and lower trend lines are close to parallel and this flag for Ethereum only lasted 18 sessions, so only 3 longer than 15, so it's not too old. Today we are seeing a break above resistance, if price can close above this trend line today, that will be an upward breakout, and if it has push from volume, which so far it does, so it will have push from volume, then we can have confidence in the upward breakout. The target from the flag for Ethereum is at 2738. I expect when price gets up to resistance about 2400, at the next test it's 
possibly going to have the power to slice through that. We may not see another pullback at that area. Volume is showing an increase today. This upward breakout will have push from volume. That's really good to see. The last signal given from on balance volume for Ethereum was bullish with a break above this resistance line, which has four or five tests, very, very shallow sloped and somewhat long held. So that's a reasonable bullish signal. If on balance volume comes back down to touch this line, this may assist to halt a fall in price. No new range, no new signal. ADX is still declining for Ethereum. The DX lines are whipsawing, so I'm not going to suggest that there could be a downward trend in play. We need to wait for the ADX line to turn around and have a positive slope, and then whichever DX line is on top will tell us which direction the trend is in. With no clear trend, reverting to a model of stochastics plus support and resistance tells us we might expect an upward swing to continue until stochastics reaches overbought and price reaches resistance. At that stage, depending on what ADX says is happening, is there a trend or not, we may expect the upward swing to end and a downward swing to begin, but if ADX says there's a trend, then we'll expect upward movement to continue. My Elliott Wave count for XRP is a little bit different. I am expecting upward movement to complete a B wave within Minor Wave 2. I don't want to label Minor Wave 2 over here as a double zigzag because the second zigzag would have barely moved beyond the end of the first and really would not have achieved its purpose. This would not look like a normal double zigzag, but it does look like a pretty good flat correction unfolding. A is a 3, B is a 3, and then C would need to be a 5 to move beyond the end of A, so below this point. B for a flat must retrace a minimum 90% the length of A, so we, for this wave count for XRP, we have to see upward movement to 0.73119 or above. B can make a new price extreme beyond the start of A, as in an expanded flat. Are really tricky structures. The key to identifying expanded flats is weakness. There should be something off or wrong about your B wave. It should have a lack of support from volume and or weak momentum and or weak range, declining volatility, some weakness about it. Whereas if minor wave 2 was over here and we see new highs beyond the end of minor 1 and that's minor 3, minor 3 should have strength, it should have push from volume, an increase in momentum, an increase in volatility and range. So depending on what the technicals say, if we do get a new high above 0.7473, I may or may not discard this idea and may or may not label minor 2 over down here. For now, this is the best Elliott wave count I can see for XRP. XRP may be having a descending triangle unfold. The breakout of these 64% of the time is downward, but upward breakouts have a better success rate. We need to see price break above resistance or below support of these triangle trend lines on a session with push from volume, particularly an upward breakout must have push from volume for confidence. Descending triangles, they generally take a lot longer. Flags and pennants are short-term continuation patterns, but triangles in classic terms are either continuation or reversal patterns, and they're a lot longer lasting. They're also a lot harder to identify. I don't like the upper trend line from this one. It's only got the minimum required two anchor points, so it doesn't have really good significance. I've got a question mark about this triangle, but I'll identify it until it shows itself to not be true. For now, if we see an upward breakout soon, the target I calculate would be about 85. If we saw a downward breakout, the target I calculate would be about 45, but I expect that is way too low. I ex there is strong support at 58 cents, and it's been holding so far. If that were to be broken, there's very strong support in the 55 cent range, and I do not expect that area to be broken now. Yesterday's downward session completed with just a little bit of a push from volume. So far, today's upward session at half past three in the afternoon does not have support from volume. Overall, price is moving sideways through the triangle with an overall declining volume. That's pretty normal behavior during a consolidation. XRP has a somewhat weak range from on balance volume. It's still within that range while price is in that consolidation. If we get a break above resistance or below support, that would offer a signal from on balance volume, and I will keep an eye on this for you. ADX is now below 15 and still declining to even lower levels. It is setting itself up for a beautiful, strong signal. We don't have a signal yet though. It needs to turn around, have a positive slope and reach 15 in order to tell us there is a new trend in a very early stage. With ADX indicating no clear trend, the model of stochastics plus support and resistance expects an upward swing for price and stochastics to continue higher to overbought, price to continue higher to resistance, and then there to turn and start a downward swing. 
If price reaches resistance and stochastics reaches overbought and ADX still indicates no clear trend, we'll expect a swing change from up to down. But if ADX then tells us there is a trend, then we would expect that trend to continue. And ADX then takes priority over this model. That's it from me today with your quick update for these three markets. And I hope everyone is having a lovely day.